Four toes were broken by a piece of foot wrapping cloth. The four year old girl cries out in pain, but the old woman pulls the cloth harder and harder until all her toes are tightly bound. This is the old social custom of foot binding. In those days, it was useless to be pretty. Women had to have perfect small feet in order to be respected. This girl's name is Lily. Her mother said she had to have small feet or she wouldn't find a good husband. At the age of four, Lily's mother asked her to walk on the floor as soon as her feet were bound so she could get used to them more quickly. Lily is painfully walking on the floor, but she's afraid to put any effort into it and can only move forward slowly. The white gauze was covered with blood in the middle of the night. She couldn't sleep because of the pain. That's how Lily got the most perfect pair of feet in the township. The most famous matchmaker in that area visited her to find her a good match. The town's most famous merchant is also interested in marrying Lily. But it's not just about feet, it's also about being equitably well married. Lily was from a poor family, so she couldn't reach the rich man. So the matchmaker made another match. She brought in Snow Flower, who was once rich but is now poor, because they were born in the same year, same month, same day, and their birth dates were very similar. They were matched as loud tone or old sayings. That's what made the rich family agree to let Lily marry into their family. The matchmaker took them to learn the female script, the secret language of women, which was also used by the old sayings to communicate with each other. Then Lily and Snowflower came to the temple and made a vow to support each other and stay together as sisters. And so the two of them grew closer as they spent time together. They both grew into beautiful young women. Lily is about to marry a rich merchant in town because of her small feet. But Snowflower was not so fortunate and had to marry into a poor family. On her wedding day, the women covered their faces with wedding handkerchiefs and sang a wedding song to see Lily off. The bride was helped out of the courtyard before getting into the sedan chair. Snowflower quietly handed Lily a fan with a female script written on it. She reminded Lily to remember that no one can break them up. And this small fan became a letter of communication between the two of them. Carrying endless thoughts, from then on, their destinies became completely different. Lily became a rich merchant's wife and Snowflower couldn't get married because she didn't have little feet. On the way night, Lily's husband didn't lift her veil but held Lily's little feet and kissed them excitedly. Lily was not happy when she married into a rich family. Her husband is cold to her and her mother-in-law is very dominant. She can't only rely on letters with Snowflower to send her thoughts. But Lily's mother-in-law didn't like the idea of her handing out with Snowflower. So Lily had to ask her servant to deliver the letters secretly. The annual temple fair was the day Lily and Snowflower were supposed to meet. But the meeting was discovered by Lily's mother-in-law. She locked Lily in the woodshed and said, Disobedience is a woman's greatest taboo. On the other hand, Snowflower was having a hard time. Her father destroyed the family fortune with his opium addiction and had to marry Snowflower off to a butcher. Her family struggles to survive and the only comfort she has is the secret fan she uses to communicate with Lily. Soon after, a plague broke out in the town and many people were infected. Even the large Lou family was not spared. Her elderly mother-in-law was bedridden and Lily was the only one who took care of her, but she died soon after. Lily burned all her clothes and became the mistress of the Lou family. With all her power, Lily was finally able to visit Snowflower, but as soon as she stepped out of the sedan chair, she was shocked by the poverty. She didn't know what kind of life Snowflower had been living in the past few years and was very sad. Snowflower said that if it wasn't for the fact that Lily had small feet and married a rich man, she would have been kicked out a long time ago. Seeing Snowflower being so optimistic makes Lily's heart ache. After dinner, Snowflower asked her husband that she wanted to spend more time with Lily tonight, but he refused. He wanted Snowflower to stay with him tonight. The two of them made so much noise at night that Lily had trouble sleeping. Instead of lifting his wife's veil, he kissed her small feet on the night of the wedding. In this abnormal age, there are deformed aesthetics. The next morning, Lily was woken up by the noise outside. It turned out that there was a rebellion by the Taiping army. They had to flee to the mountains for refuge. But in the panic, Snowflower lost their only ox. Her son cried and tried to find the cow but her husband stopped him. Little did he know that this would be the last time he would ever see his son. He settled down and went back the way he came to look for the cow. At night, the snow in the sky became heavier and heavier. The sleeping snow flower didn't notice that the blanket covering his son had been pulled away. His body was exposed to the cold and snow. By the time snow flower's husband returned the next day, the snow had already covered that entire land. He touched his son and found him cold and without a heartbeat. Snow flower pounced on him with all her might, but her husband beat her black and blue. He had told Snowflower where his son was buried. It was the worst revenge for a mother. Lily was heartbroken. Snowflower could only cry silently at the loss of her son. 
and the remorse she felt made her never forgive herself. But Lily thought the butcher was a bad husband, and Snowflower shouldn't suffer here. She wants to take Snowflower and her daughter back to her hometown to live a rich life. But Snowflower refused Lily because she thought she had become a burden to her. She wrote Lily a folded letter a short time later. Snowflower wrote that she had made new old sames and wanted to break off contact with Lily. The letter was heartbreaking for Lily. Her every word was like a knife cutting into Lily's body and her heart. It was as if Lily had lost her only support, and she was devastated. Lily asked the servants to burn all the letters they'd written over the years. And so the days went by. As the years went by, Lily's hair grew thin and gray. One day, a young girl came into her house and said she was Snowflower's daughter. She cried and pleaded with Lily to meet Snowflower. Snowflower was already dying and kept saying Lily's name. Lily was still upset about the farewell, but the girl explains that it was all a misunderstanding. Snowflower had done it all because she thought she was a burden to Lily. She didn't want Lily to worry about her anymore, so she lied to Lily that she had found new old sames. Lily rushed to see her after years of not seeing her. Snowflower was already dying on the hospital bed and was holding on to her last breath waiting for Lily. Snowflower saw Lily and let go of her obsession. Lily, lying beside Snowflower, just as she did when she was a child. But the good times were never to return. When Lily was cleaning up Snowflower's belongings, she found a letter that they had exchanged. So she wrote her last letter in the secret fan. At that particular time, women were bound by all sorts of constraints. No dignity, no freedom. They could only warm and comfort each other. Andy took out a small, worn-out shoe that the girls couldn't believe it was made for human feet. Andy says it's a relic of her great-grandmother. The 19th century was a time when the practice of foot binding was rampant. Her great-grandmother also had an old saint who was a good friend. They made a lifelong pact to stay together. So these two sympathetic girls signed a vow to be faithful to each other under the auspices of their aunt. Sophia was a Korean Chinese who moved to Shanghai with her family and met Nina, who was about the same age. In a hotel, they became close friends and talked about everything. But Sophia's father was addicted to stock market speculation and soon lost the family fortune and passed away under heavy pressure. And her mother never gave Sophia a second glance. She even said at Sophia's father's funeral that she would send Sophia back to Korea if she didn't get into college. Sophia could only talk to Nina about her grievances. The two girls could only snuggle with each other for warmth. Soon the college entrance exams came. Facing her mother's pressure, Sophia ran away. This made Nina very anxious. Nina thought of her best friend and made a bold decision. She changed the name of her exam paper to Sophia. Nina's grades were excellent, so maybe she could take the test again the next year. But it wasn't long before she received a disciplinary letter at home. Nina's cheating was found out, resulting in all her grades being invalidated. And she was even banned from taking the entrance exam for three years. But in the face of her parents' warring scolding, Nina has no regrets. The only thing that mattered to her was that she was about to be separated from Sophia. During these three years, Nina didn't forget to study while working. She got into a major university with excellent grades and became an executive of a listed company. Nina was also selected to work at the New York headquarters because of her excellent working ability. Nina was both happy and hesitant to hear the news. She was worried about Sophia, who was alone in Shanghai, and feared that something might happen to her. That day, Nina was on a date with her boyfriend when she saw Sophia at the other table, but Sophia was in the middle of accepting a marriage proposal from her rich boyfriend Adam. Nina pulled Sophia aside and asked her to think carefully about getting married. After all, Sophia and Adam have only known each other for a month, and getting married is related to her happiness for the rest of her life. But Sophia insisted that Adam was reliable, and so the two of them parted ways. Just when she was hesitating to go to New York, Nina received the news that Sophia had been in a car accident. She rushed to the hospital and saw a sickly Sophia. This made her feel very bad. She didn't know what Sophia's accident was about. So she went to Sophia's rented house to check it out and found a letter Sophia wrote to her. It turns out Sophia doesn't like Adam at all. She just didn't want to drag Nina down. So she chose to let Nina go to New York to pursue her dream in this way. Knowing the whole story, Nina was in tears. Then she found a novel called Snowflower and the secret fan in Sophia's bag. It tells the story of Snowflower and Lily a hundred years ago. Nina couldn't help but think of her and Sophia when she read the novel. The similarity of their experiences made Nina feel as if she was a character in the novel, experiencing a reincarnation. In order to prevent the tragedy in the novel from repeating itself, Nina went back to the hospital room and took Sophia's hand. This time, no matter what happens, Nina will never leave Sophia again.